Mississippi pulled me in. I don't know what they want. Uh, just recording. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Rusty and we are back truck driving in our wonderful Volvo that we got from our company. It's a 2019 Volvo VNL 760, exactly the same one I need for my rebuild. Like I said before, right now we are in the middle of nowhere, somewhere at a mine site in Arizona. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're mining for here, but I'm delivering 16 pallets to them of tools. When I was driving up here, this place is beautiful. There was some cliffs, mountain areas, cut off cliffs. It will look really, really nice. I have my vest and I have my helmet and uh, you're supposed to wear these when you go to a mine like this, I'm guessing. I am gonna be going to California. I could go down to Tucson and over right here, or I can take this route right here, which I've never been on. And my truck GPS actually states that I'm allowed to go there. So. I'm gonna believe both of them. I'm gonna take this new route and see what it's all about. Maybe it has some nice scenery so I can show you guys what's up. All right, they offloaded me. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about right now is catching a nail because half of this stuff is like gravel, half of it is pavement. And I mean, it would suck, but it happens. I just asked one of the guys, what are they mining here for? And they said gold and copper, mostly gold. So that's pretty sweet. I can't believe, uh, Arizona mines for gold. I remember back in the day there was like a gold rush over here, but I guess it still exists. That's pretty cool. They made a nice little town out of this uh, mining outpost. I mean, it looks pretty civilized. People drive pretty decent cars here. I mean, looks pretty nice, but it is in the middle of nowhere this guy I talked to over there he says that there's actually little outposts all these people that live in these houses they actually have most of them have have their own little claims and they mine and dig for gold and washouts and stuff like that that's pretty cool I mean these people live live for gold it is beautiful but has some steep steep hills Man, feels like I'm back in the old wild west, boys. There's a cliff to my right, a train to my left, some dude riding in right there, just chilling. Free pour, copper and gold. wow very beautiful here i guess uh enjoy the scenery while i you know play some music with it
it's raining, but I finally put Rain-X on my window. Look at that, it just beads off without even using my windshield wipers. And I can drive like this uh, without using my windshield wipers. Uh, but sometimes when it gets really crazy rain, I'll turn on my windshield wipers, whatever. I mean, it's not that much of a difference, but actually, yeah, I guess it is cleaner. Rain-X, good stuff, good stuff. I had to stop real quick because I had a little notice on my gauge that my brakes were getting hot or something like that. I don't know what was going on. And then I noticed that it's a 7% grade coming up right there. And I just pulled over, maybe my brakes overheated or something. I mean, I'm using J brake, but, and I'm using brakes because it's so steep. Hopefully everything goes well, let's go down this hill. Whoa, that was rough, 7% grade. I think the steepest I've ever went on was 6% over there on I-40 in Tennessee. Uh, this is 7% grade, that was kind of crazy actually. But I was going slow, taking it easy, using mainly J-brake. So, you know, good old Volvo, she's a good truck. Yes, I-10, I-10, I missed you, I-10. Yeah, that scenic route was pretty decent. I liked it, but my I-10, I-20 route is the best. You just haul butt. Just kidding, I don't miss you, I-10. This traffic, though. Dang, look at this. Somebody be leaking a lot of oil. Probably an old truck. Well, before we enter to California, we need to fix our tandems on our trailer and I'll show you why. As you guys can see, my tandems are pulled up pretty, pretty back there in California law, 40 feet from Kingpin, all the way back to the rear middle of the axle. So we need to move this up about one and a half foot and I'll show you how to do that right now. So I got my tape measure right there. I'm at seven feet, so I need to move it two feet. So you have to make sure your trailer brakes are set. And on this trailer, we have this little lever. Those pins come in and this is ready to slide. So we need to reverse to make this slide back. So you gotta make sure don't touch the trailer brake, push in your tractor brake, and we're gonna have to reverse and move it back. All right, we got it moved front a little bit. I have it marked right there. 
and we're good to go. And the only thing I have to do is dislocate my trailer brake and those pins will come in. Or you can go ahead and do it manually, push these in. And you can tell they're not lined up with the holes, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just drive forward a little bit and they'll clip in. I'll go back and check it. You always have to double check it. Sometimes they don't come in and this thing will slide around, so always double check. All right, looks like they clipped in nicely. They went in these holes. We're ready to go. Let's go inside California, my favorite state. California inspection. Let's see California, communist California. Hopefully you don't be checking my load again like last time. Okay, okay, no inspection, that's fine. Let's, let's see about the weight station. Oh yeah, scales are closed. Awesome, thank you, California. Look at this line at the scales. Thank God it gave me, <laughs> it says scales closed, do not enter because this thing is packed out. Shoo! It's the next morning and we are parked Bobtail right there. And I slept really, really nice. And my company actually warehouse is right there around the corner, like two miles. And we are about to hook up and get ready for a local run. It's a really quick run. It's just they're getting some stuff ready for me to go up north or back to east coast. We'll see what happens. Let's go back to the warehouse and hook up. Man, this thing feels like it's flying without a trailer. Man, this thing is fast. Right when a turbo spools up, it like pulls you back to your seat. Uh, that is a very dangerous actually. I know it's all fun and games sometimes. This thing feels like a bullet. This thing is very top heavy, so you cannot take turns really fast. You feel like you're in a race car and all that, but you have to be very, very careful in a bobtail because I've seen so much people flip and crash on bobtails because they can't control it because it's super fast and it's super light. So yeah, you gotta be very careful. Yeah, I think the worst part about this job is doing these local runs sometimes. Sometimes happen, sometimes not, but you know, it's 80% chance that when you get to a location like coast to coast, you're gonna be having to do some drop-offs and some pickups, some drop-offs. But that's just the name of the game, but I don't like that. I'm supposed to be over the road, you know? That means always highway, long hauls, but sometimes, you know, they make you do these short trips that take up your time but they do pay for extra stops this is called a local run so this is going to be 40 bucks for this stop plus the miles i don't know is it worth it got to do what you got to do at least this place is only four miles away that's pretty good this place is beautiful in the daytime though i don't know if you guys can see it all the way in the distance over there there's these crazy nice mountains oh man it looks really nice and all the way on a snow toppy peak right there is uh yeah, I just gave it up, but it's snow. <laughs> it looks very beautiful. California is a very, very beautiful place. So I think I just figured out my check engine light. If you guys remember, I had a check engine light and no codes are shown. I just popped this little cover right here and i just noticed that this negative cable is loose that could cause the check engine light 100 percent so i'm gonna get some pliers i think i had yeah i got, I got some pliers i'm gonna tighten it and see if the check engine light is still there all righty let's check it out looks like check engine light is still on maybe that wasn't the issue we'll see we're gonna drive it 
and maybe I'll do a little reset. We'll see, we'll take the clamp off and put it back on. Main switch that controls the cab, but whatever, still drives good. All righty, got that local dropped off and back to the warehouse. All righty, we are back loaded and we are heading up North California, San Jose area. We have two partials and one of them is for Lowe's and the next one is some sort of insulation or blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter what it is, huh? But yeah, let's go up to North Cali, yay. morning 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 what a beautiful day in california my favorite state in america and we are almost at our drop off it took me only about five hours to get here man i did not know it was this slow traveling at 60 miles sorry 55 miles per hour in california this sucks man so slow i'm so used to going 75 in texas and the desert but let's get this first drop off done and the second one and then we can head back to east coast or back to la that was my first time dropping off at lowe's that was interesting felt like i'm a local or regional driver for a second that was kind of weird yeah, I think the worst part about this job is doing these local pickups and local drop-offs for the company. I don't know. I mean, company is sort of newish, so I mean, I guess they're still getting their bearings straight. Partial things for the dry vans kind of suck. I mean, you have to go there, go there. I mean, technically you do get paid for the extra pickups, extra drop-offs and all the local stuff you're doing for them, but I mean, it kind of evens out. I kind of did some calculations. It evens out about the mileage and how much they pay for it. So I guess it's not too bad. One more drop off, some sort of insulation or something, maybe two cars because it's some sort of automotive sector I'm going to. And right beside there, it says Tesla. So I might be delivering to Tesla, guys. We will see. Oh, traffic, how I love you, traffic. So my Google Maps says there's traffic for seven more minutes. Yeah, it's not too bad, but I do not know San Jose was this bad. I thought it was only LA area, but I guess all California is a standstill. Well, at the second drop off, and it is confirmed that this is a Tesla distribution manufacturing warehouse, and they did not allow me to record in here. By the way, if you guys didn't know, I asked permission to record outside their lot. Some people don't care, some people do. And Tesla was like, uh, yeah, no. They did explain some procedures they did here. They're uh, molding pretty much the plastics inside Tesla. They have these beads. They melt down into the door panels, into the sheets of plastic they use in the Teslas. And I am delivering insulation to the inner door panels of the doors. So that's pretty cool. I can't even show you guys much, sorry about that. But yeah, second delivery, almost done. Took a lot longer than I thought it would, but we are heading out and we will be at our next pickup. We are empty right now. We are picking up in San Jose area. I don't know what it is, but I know where it's going. It's going back to LA area. So I guess from there, I'm going back to East. We'll see. made it to my pickup man this has been a very short day but it feels very long because all of these short stops here and there very annoying this is the worst part of this job is the hassle of local pickups and drops i don't know if every company is like this but this is the worst part but it's not bad like i said before they do pay for all these extra stops so uh evens out righty got loaded and we are ready to go five hour journey back to la
just did my drop off early in the morning and I have a little time left. I'm about to do my PTI and then we're gonna head up to our next pickup. Dispatch already sent me a pickup location six miles away from here and it's telling me it's gonna take me 35 minutes to get there, six miles. Yeah, welcome to Los Angeles, guys. Traffic 24 seven, nonstop. How do people live here? I don't know. Here at my pickup and this partial load is going to Jacksonville, Florida where I'm from. So that's a good sign that I'm going back east, but we'll see what the second load says. I might be just bringing this all to the warehouse and then sorting it out and then keep going. Going for my second pickup in Compton, California. Yep, I said Compton. We'll see how ghetto it is over there. Look at this 300ZX, nice and red. I love these cars. I mean, this one's kind of raggedy, but man, I would love to rebuild another one of those. This is a cool little dock they have. It's like half indoor and half outdoor. Well, it's actually this whole dock is meant for straight trucks, so it can go all the way in in the winter times. And when it's really hot, they have a sea blowing in there. They actually have a heater in there. That's pretty cool. It's insulation, so obviously it has to be indoors. But I've never been in one of these where you could slide all the way inside the building. All right, leaving straight out of Compton and going to the warehouse. I don't know what's going on here, but people with masks selling something. This guy's sitting here acting all sketchy. I don't know, man. Welcome to Compton, I guess. Never mind. I'm not going to go to a warehouse. I'm hungry. I'm going to park at this Petro and then walk across the bridge over there. There's this awesome buffet called Lux Buffet. It's really, really good. Well, that was a decent meal. Lunchtime was a little expensive, 16 bucks. I mean, whatever, the buffet at Petro is like 15, 16 bucks anyways. We have two beautiful trucks. We have the 860 and the 760. They both look pretty nice, pretty even. Obviously the 860 is much bigger, but both are beautiful. I am in Phoenix right now and I actually totally forgot to record when I was uh, offloading and stuff like that. But I already scaled up. They added me a secondary load. I'm heading to Charlotte, North Carolina and my scale is right there. I'm actually using a digital scale. The CAT scales come in an app. If you download the app, you can actually click a button, pay right there and then boom, you get your weight instead of going inside a truck stop and getting your weight you get it digitally, it's so much better. Anyways, I'm 70,000 gross, not even that heavy. Trailer is good, drives are good, steer is heavy, but I like when the steer is heavy. You stay pretty straight on the road when the steer is almost at 12,000, but I am ready to go and I can't believe it, I am almost home. This trip has kind of been a nightmare. This sucks about these, a bunch of local pickups. I mean, that's just the name of the game. I know I complain a lot about it, but it is still a decent job. Welcome to New Mexico, the land of enchantment. All right, all right, that's cool, bro. But New Mexico, you are very boring. It takes about, I think it's like one hour and a half to go through you. It's not bad, wait station is coming up within an hour. That's the last one until all the way to Louisiana. So that's really, really nice. We're actually about to hit Lurdsburg. It's uh, pretty much the place that we went up north to deliver that one load in the beginning of the video that I showed you to that mining site. And we're gonna be passing that very, very shortly. And it is getting dark, but got a couple hours, gotta keep on trucking.
All right, made it to Dallas and we are at a Blue Beacon truck wash. Hopefully they wash my truck a little better than last time. She is dirty. I don't know what this stuff is, but I like it when my truck is super clean. So we're gonna have to give her a bath. There's always a white guy that's gonna respond to that shit. What? Dude, screw this. I've been here 30 minutes. I just done my break and it's still like seven trucks in line. I'm not waiting, dude. I'm just gonna leave, whatever. I'll wash it later. Okay, I'm trying to fuel up and this regular car is inside the fuel deck. Well, Mississippi pulled me in. I don't know what they want. Hello? Good. You're gonna get uh, all your paper on your truck, force your cab card, international field tax agreement, your shirt. Yeah, all, all, CDL. yeah, all of that stuff is in there. Hey, why do you have a camera in your hand? Uh, just recording for purposes. Recording for what purposes? Just personal purposes. Okay. Yeah. You said CDL? CDL. Well, random pool in, so they wanted to know updated uh, insurance information on the truck, so we'll see what happens. I'm Well, he let me go. Just had to get some updated paperwork and stuff like that. I, sh I forgot one of the updated stuff, but man, cool guy. Very, very nice guy. I was actually surprised. Uh, he did kind of ask me uh, why I was recording him and stuff. But I mean, look, I, I told him purpose, like personal purposes only, because I was just wondering how the process goes. This is my first time ever getting pulled in. So yeah, nice guy, just doing his job. Dang, that was kind of scary actually. That guy was actually really nice. He was the only one inside the weight station and he pretty much explained to me that I was overweight by 200 pounds or 300 something pounds on my drives. I told him that I just fueled up, bro. What the heck? And he was like, okay. And then he was asking me about my paperwork, why there wasn't an updated insurance form. And I was like, oh dude, I don't know. Cause I guess I forgot to check. And then I called my company. They sent an updated form uh, on me and he was already writing me a violation on his left side. I didn't record this by the way, because I was already, okay, I'm getting a violation. Maybe I should be nicer. And I pretty much started talking to him. I'm like, yeah, God, sorry, man. I, I'm new. I'm like four months into the job. I just got my license. So I'm new. And then he's like, oh, you're new. And I was like, yeah, this is my, you know, like a uh, seventh trip or something. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And then we started talking. He's like, oh, where are you from? And I told him, explained to him, I'm foreigner and blah, blah, blah. And he was really nice actually. And then the paperwork that he was already signing for the violation he folded that thing and threw it in the trash and i seen that and i was really happy so he was like okay you're good to go man and he let me off with nothing if you're watching this deuces to you man and thank you so much uh but yeah that was uh, my first uh <laughs> weight station experience right there All right, I am at my drop off. I am done for this trip, guys. I appreciate it for staying tuned with this video. And we've been through a lot. We were at the gold mine in Arizona and we went up through California, did a bunch of local stuff and it was kind of annoying, but that's just, you know, the pain I go through sometimes. I just wanted to show you guys that it's not all rainbows and unicorns. I actually go through a bunch of local deliveries and it is annoying and very stressful sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, it has its up and downs, but it's a job, you know? I mean, it's, it's sometimes hard, sometimes easier, sometimes it's long haul, long haul, and then sometimes it's locals. It's just the way it is is yo look at these ducks you think they're gonna eat out of my hand ah 
I don't know, bro. This is peanut butter and crackers. Are you guys allowed to eat peanut butter? Here. Oh my God. Yo, you a little stingy. Get out of here. All right. I, did I feed you? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, geez. I'm gonna throw this one, okay? The first one gets it wins. <sighs> oh, the white one got it. Woo! So, yeah, guys, I appreciate it for sticking tuned with my channel. Keep up with everything that I do because very, very soon I will be doing another rebuild series and then I will be keeping up with looking for a cab for my Volvo and it's coming very soon. So stay tuned for that and also buy my merch. I got some merch out. Yeah, so I appreciate it, guys, for watching. Deuces.